So Marvel just released their latest film in the MCU, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And tonight, on World Class Bullshitters, we're going to discuss it and review it. I'm your host, Jeff Hicks, and with me tonight is the one, the only, Dion Green. Baby, baby, back again, and yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Charlotte, for showing me your naked body. And MCU, thank you again for another solid performance. Now, is Hillary joining us tonight? Okay. Okay, then there's Hillary. I guess. <laughs> Up next, the last standing Samoa Nick. Oh, hi, guys. And finally, hi. the Dr. Phil Sites, I guess. I'm here. Dude, you gotta take the mic away from you your mouth. You sound up, like dude. you're in the you water. Like... It's not even that close. You... It, it's, it's something's rubbing, whether it's your dick rubbing the microphone or you breathing on it, it is like right there. Try to try to. Quit, quit trying to shove the microphone where it doesn't belong. <laughs> Do the butt but, thing after the show, Phil. God damn but it. it. But it likes to go there. Phil farts on <laughs> Skype for money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure some Chinese businessmen would, would pay for that. He is the diabetic Sonny. Are you guys starting an ASMR channel? A what? The, the one where Phil just breathes into the microphone and says... Like, Lace. Buzz, 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 buzz. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, if you clicked on here expecting a Guardians of the Galaxy review, I'm sorry you had to wait a whole one minute. But <laughs> let's get into that right now. So, what is this, the 15th movie in the MCU? Woo. Yeah, 15th or 16th. And I'm just going to say it, they still haven't made a bad movie. Oh, agreed. Very true. So, we'll go do a round table. And I'll ask everyone if they liked it first, and then we'll tell why. Nick, did you like it? Oh, yeah, I liked it. I was I was skeptical going in because of, you know, just hearing stuff and interviews and things. But um, I was pleasantly surprised, and um, I liked it a lot better than the first one. I feel the same way. I say fuck reviewers after I left that, because I thought it was better than the first one on every level. Oh, yeah. Phil? I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um... Dave Batista is absolutely brilliant. <laughs> that is the perfect role for him. I... I agree. He's awesome. I mean, we know him as a wrestler. Most people just know him as an actor. If he would have had this personality as a wrestler, I think he could have been a bigger star. And he was already a main event draw, so... You know. Maybe if Batista had this personality in the WWE, we wouldn't have had John Cena. <laughs> Rabadoo! Alright, Dion and Hillary, what do you guys think? I I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, our 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 things uh, the first Marvel movie of the spring. Hillary, myself, and my sister we go and see it, and you know this one definitely lived up to what we thought it was. We specifically didn't really look at any reviews of it. Um, I thought it was fair. I, I agree, it was better than the first one. Um, there there a, a few things bothered me, but overall I it was I, I had a blast watching this movie. Yeah, it was it was just for me. I loved it because it was fun. Because I like the first one a lot because it was fun. This one, I think it it kept with it. But at the same time, I had the feels too. It made yeah, me was... laugh, made me cry. I didn't cry, but you could hear people sniveling in our theaters. Like, was that? Oh no, I was sniffling. one of those people. Yeah. Sniveling. <laughs> I made us sound like assholes. Probably are. <laughs> <laughs> now, Hillary, I'm with you though on the emotional aspect. It was way heavier than the first one, but in a good way. Yeah. I, I liked everyone's relationship. Oh, yeah, it definitely... It all developed very well. From the it, was a fir- it was a first for a Marvel movie, because the first Guardians was not the anchor for that summer. It was uh, Winter Soldier. Guardians mm-hmm. just kind of came out of nowhere, and it was a kind of fun, light movie, and it made a lot of money. Now, this one's just as fun, but heavier, and I hope it makes more money. I'm excited to see the box office numbers come Monday. Yeah, I really hope that the early reviewers reviews don't hurt this movie because it doesn't. Those it reviews won't. don't do it justice. It won't. It, it'll. It'll. This. This machine's going. Which you know it needed after Iron Fist, but it. It. You know, the machine is is chugging right along. It, they've they've got the groove going for it, sure. It didn't stop anyone from seeing Batman vs Superman opening night. Why would it stop it from Guardians 2? That's true. Batman v Superman was so jacked. I don't know. The, I don't, the the outcome at Newport on the levee was 
There really wasn't a whole lot of people there. Usually when you go to see a big midnight premiere there, there's traffic getting out of the garage. You're sitting there waiting 20 minutes. I, I was in and out right away. Well, Phil, also, I don't know. there were multiple screens, and the only movie that's really like that is uh, Star Wars. Yeah, true. Because, I mean, I go to the same theater. I see these movies with you, and always the Star Wars movies are the ones that are jam-packed. Like, we couldn't even see Rogue One together because it was so busy, but uh, this one, I had the same turnout as, like, Doctor Strange, and Doctor Strange made a bunch of money. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, this this one released overseas, I think, earlier than, than in the U.S. I think last week it was in the U.K. It, it had a big release there. I wish, I mean, I was watching a video on why they get their movies before us for, like, certain times a year. Because in Europe, all these people go on vacation during mm -hmm. the summer months, and they don't go to the movies. Unlike in America, where people go to the movies in the summer to get escape the heat and just stuff to do when kids are out of school. Because all these other countries take vacations. Most people just stay home. Unless you're the bullshitters and you go to WrestleMania. Word, word. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah. We, we but, still uh, owe our listeners a video on that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I do have, I do have the foreign numbers uh, on bo Box Office What is it? Box Office Mojo. What's this movie. Well, the budget for the movie is $200 million. So far, worldwide. The fo this is only foreign, not U.S. It's only foreign. $154 million. Oh, oh, that'll be fine. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll yeah. probably make that much opening weekend here in America. Yeah. True. Because we just saw it at 7 o'clock on the, not on the East Coast, but Eastern Standard Time. And Cincinnati is a, well, Newport, it's still a fairly big city, but I bet you the turnout in Chicago, New York, L.A. and stuff's going to be way bigger. Oh, yeah. Plus, a lot of people still do midnight movies as opposed to the 7 p.m. release, so. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Some of us have to work in the morning. Some of us just can't wait till midnight because, you know, this show. <laughs> exactly. Fuck that shit. Like, if there was a midnight release of, I don't know, episode 8, and that was the only one I could see, it would suck, because the movie's gonna suck, so I have to stay up to watch that. <laughs> then another two hours to review it, and bitch. And then another hour to edit it and make an image and all this other shit. It would... I'd be up till 5 or 6 and then, in the morning. And then, and then you have to go to sleep with that, that fucking movie in your head. I, you know what? I have about 8 months, or excuse me, 7 months until I have to suffer through that shit, so I don't want to go there right now. Let's talk about a good movie. Let's talk about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. So, what was everyone's favorite part? Nick, we'll go with you first. Um, I loved I loved the beginning where, like, they, they literally just show, like, Baby Groot dancing and chasing things. Like that. And all you see is, like, them fighting in the background, this giant creature. And I loved that so much because the importance of what's happening, and it, it's kind of the reverse of usually how that stuff works. Uh, but... Usually it's important things in the front, funny stuff in the back. This time it was funny things in the front uh, and important stuff in the in, in the background. And I really liked that. And I thought that was uh, really fun for the you know beginning credits and stuff. Phil? Baby Groot was okay. I felt in the movie because I feel like, you know, that's all it's going to center around anymore. And But anyway, uh, my favorite part of this movie, I already said it, Batista. Just Batista. It's hysterical. General? Uh, just Batista, anything he did this week, what he, he called the girl hideous. He's like, oh, you're hideous. No. I thought, I was going to say, I thought she was really hot. Like, that woman, I was yeah, watching she was really the whole time, I was like, god damn, like, Batista, you know, send her my way if you're not That's interested the in joke. Yes. I get the <laughs> joke, ah, Super Dion. funny joke. I get the joke, Dion, believe me, it wasn't lost on me. But okay. as a guy, I'm sitting there going, damn, like... You, know. you lying motherfucker. Yeah. Dion, what's your favorite part? Um, my favorite part, I thought it was the best line in all the MCU movies when uh Yandu is is jumping on uh Rocket and he you know he's like, No, I know who you are because 'cause I'm you and then he goes you know, Rocket he goes, he goes, What a pair are we? And then Yandu's like, Well apparently we're a pair that's gonna go fight a planet. And he's like, Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I thought that was like the coolest line in all the MCU, just like it hits you real hard, and then we're gonna go fight a planet. Fucking sweet. That <laughs> that was my favorite part of the whole. Like I literally leaned over to him. I was like, "That is the best line yeah. in the entire MCU." True story, right there. Hillary, what was your favorite part? Oh, I. It's a toss up, but I think the when they're um, the well, the second I guess second big fight after opening credits where they're flying away. 
and all the ships are chasing them, and they're going to crash land, and Batista just jumps out the back <laughs> and starts blasting the ship from outside. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> it was very badass, and I loved it. Yeah, that part, too, when yeah. he's bouncing off the tree. Yeah. And he's just like, that was so awesome! Yeah. I was like, god damn it, Drex, you are the fucking man. <laughs> it's funny how if listeners don't know his real name. We're just going to keep saying Batista like they expect us to, or like we expect them to know who Batista <clears throat> is. <laughs> like, who's this They're Batista like, character? Batista? It's like, pay attention, assholes, pay attention. Like, he bow, was a pro bow. wrestler, and he was in James Bond and shit. Like, he, he exists outside of Drex. Yeah, and his and, and his career just keeps going up and up. So now for me, keep it up, Dave. My, my keep favorite it up. part was uh, the eulogy for Yondu at the end. Oh my god, that was good. I cried. And also, I, just I, I did as well. Just Yondu in general. Like I hated him in the first movie. He stole I, the show, dude. He stole yeah. the show. Because I don't like Michael Rooker. I've met him in person. He's kind of an asshole. But, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Michael Rooker really impressed me, and I hate The Walking Dead, so I was glad God, to see him die. He's one of the best parts of Walking Dead, and that's saying something. He really is. He like that, like well, he's he was. In the last, he's in the last good season of The Walking Dead, and his like season the best thing about Michael Rooker is he's very good at playing the asshole who's like who really wants to be good, even though he plays the asshole in so much stuff. Probably because he is an asshole. That yep. that actually makes a lot of sense, you too. But um, <laughs> but. But, like, especially, like, him being, like, you know, because, and I was trying to figure out what that scene was with with Sly, and then at the end, I'm like, God, that, and I'm with you, man, that, those, the, the rest of the Ravengers came out, and I was just like, oh, fuck, dude, I'm getting emotional. What'd you think about Ving Rhames showing up? Him and Bai Ling, I was like, you fuck yeah. said, is that Ving Rhames? <laughs> that wasn't, that wasn't Bai Ling, that was Michelle Yeoh from Tomorrow Never Dies. Or Michelle Yeoh, not Bai Ling. Bai Ling, Bai Ling can't Ling. act. I said by <laughs> Yeah, but she's cute and Asian. But, you know, you know, you know. So Michelle, was you know, uh, the girl that played Mantis, but she wasn't, you know, playing dual roles. Well, you know, you know that and, you know, that's that's cool and stuff. My bad. I'll get a mix up. I'm not racist, I swear. <laughs> you, you better not be virtue signaling on this podcast. That's the last thing I'll allow. <laughs> no, that was that was a great part. I think of, of, of all the MCU movies... This one did a very good job of sprinkling shit in earlier and then circling back to it. You know, because a lot of them, you know, this it had, you know, it had the the plants that that ego was putting on each planet. It circled back to the mom. It circled back to her having cancer from a, from the previous movie. Then it circles back to you know his conversation with Sly Stallone. You know, him referencing you know you never go, you never tra- you never traffic kids. And, I, and you know, we had to wait the whole movie for that shit. Because I leaned over. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? Did I miss something? It was good. Yeah, that was good. Plus, they buttoned everything up pretty well. Oh God, yes. I mean, yeah the the, the way they the way they yeah w- you know put everything together was uh, was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I don't. I can't. I don't. I can't think of like a loose end. Well, you brought up the MCU in general, Dion. Everyone, um, just off the top of your head, where would you put this in the MCU? Just give me a. An arbitrary number. Nick? Um, four. <laughs> okay, so it's your fourth favorite MCU film. Yeah. Phil? Um, I, I, I'll say five. Dion? Uh, I'd say if there's a top tier and we're talking Civil War, Winter Soldier, Iron Man, uh, The First Avengers... I'd say Guardians is just outside that top tier. It's 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 an upper mid card to use jargon from Ringlust. <laughs> Hillary, I'm with Dion. I would probably put it at six for me. Just just because there's so many good movies to choose from, and it it doesn't say anything that lessens Guardians Volume Two, but. Like I'd put it, I'd put it just below Daredevil season one is where I would put it. Oh, I'm not even going to include that because that's not fair. Because that, that puts Daredevil ahead of most movies for me. Well, obviously, I mean, I, I'm saying, I'm saying as a whole. I mean, even you know, even if you're taking in the episodic stuff, you know, if you like, I, I just in, in my train of thought, I'm counting that as like one long ass movie. Okay, so character development, story, inclusion of the rest of the universe, blah 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 blah. blah. I think Guardians is Guardians Two is like that 
perfect little bridge to where it's like, hey, you know, obviously we have this giant game plan going, but hey, we're still a comic book company and we can still fucking um, have stories that don't have to tie into the overall uh, the overall end game. Well, I'm, for me, it'd probably be about eight or nine. I don't know where. I mean, it's not. I don't like it better than I like it better than the first Captain America, I guess. And I like it better than Iron Man's two and three, and four mm-hmm. and two. But I like. I mean, I, I don't really like the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. I don't think it's as good as everyone says. It's still fine. Like I don't give it a bad rating, and I enjoy it. But I feel like so many people get invested in like the parts of that movie that really, like, oh my god, the song, and this and that, and the dumb parts of that movie, <laughs> which are the popular parts, or the, the parts I don't like. So therefore, I don't enjoy the Big movie. surprise! Well, well, no, I, I rewatched the first one before I watched this one, and, like, yeah. even the, you know, the... <sighs> The main the, the main bad guy, I didn't even know where he was from. It was like very little information was given about him and his people. Yeah, like, Ronan the Accuser. At all. Yeah, I was just like, he just pops up and he like, started doing this ritual of him like coming out of the liquid and like putting dirt on him and putting his clothes on. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? Why are we afraid of him? What What is his deal? Yeah, but you didn't have that much information on... Blackie and Thanos. <clears throat> right. You know, I mean, the other... Mar- the MCU is not exactly known for giving a bunch of backstory yeah. to the villains. So, well, they I mean, did that's this like- time. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, for and the sure. best part this is you didn't even know he was the bad guy until the fucking end of the movie. You're like, oh shit! Right. It's... I had a feeling he was the bad guy though because I knew he was a planet. I'm like, this can't be good. There's got to be something. He's a big planet. Why is he like all of a sudden? Ah, that's my son. After not seeing you. Yeah, and and, and also and and also, young Kurt Russell was was really weird, but it was cool how they did that. <laughs> Like, um, oh, it was so great. I loved it. And I fucking love Kurt Russell, though. See, and that's oh, the thing. God, Kurt yeah. Russell proved yet again why he's the fucking man. Yes. Like, because he, you know, for, to someone to act like, a, you know, the, the physical representation of a planet, and I've been around for millions of years, you're like, God. I Damn. believe you. Kurt I'm like Russell. you. You are a planet, Kurt Russell. You're my planet. <laughs> yeah. and I'm your move, sir. I'll be your husband. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Dion and Hillary won a three with Kurt Russell. <laughs> oh, Dion killed him. <laughs> oh, damn. All right. Well, shit. <laughs> but I know what you're saying about the first Guardians. It for me, the first Guardians is nothing more than a fun flick. Right. It, it's it's the for it being the the lesser known property. It's the bridge for people who don't know the backstory to all the movies like even though people all the movies because i disagree with that wholeheartedly it doesn't connect to any so. of the movies there's no what bridge no, 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 i'm not saying that people know about it. i'm just saying that so no, I, there's, so, but so there's no but people there's who don't no read comic books even people that, who don't read that that people, doesn't hold up because in no way does that connect to the other movies you could just show people that movie again there's, i mean there's me, no uh, there's no bridge though that's not the that's not the point I'm making. What I'm that's saying what you is are. Not, you said not, it's a bridge. no 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 not for the stories, Jeff. Let me finish what I'm saying first. What I'm saying is, it's not a bridge to the story or the characters. It's the lesser known of of because even people who don't read comic books have heard of Captain America, have heard of Iron Man, have heard of Thor. No one really heard about the Guardians of the Galaxy. But even though it's not, it's it's kind of like the, the 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 lesser known property. It's the movie that doesn't have a whole lot connecting to it but it it's it, it brings people who don't really know comic books into it because it's not a, it's not a whole, it's not like a heavy ass movie like this this is going to bring the rest of the Thanos story into it like it's, it was just like a fun movie that people can see Groot and kind of see Chris Pratt and they see all the pop culture references and it's and it's and it's the fun the fun movie of the whole series it's not so heavy as the remainder of the MCU Okay I just don't think it's a bridge to bring people in though cuz people are already in I mean, the Avengers made the amount they use Baby Groot. It definitely, it that, that proved no, it. No, that's not. It's not what I'm talking about. It's it's a it's a nice bridge to bring in young women and people mm-hmm. that think shit's cute. But the, they already mm-hmm. brought it in with the Avengers when it made almost two billion dollars. That's that. I mean, there was already a bridge there. I mean, I definitely agree that it's a fun flick and it's easy to digest. But there was already a connection to these movies. So if anything, it's just it was a, it's the sleeper hit. It's the surprise one that people went oh. I like this movie. Maybe I'll check out the other ones, but it wasn't the one that did it for everybody. Because if it was the one that did it for everybody, it would be the most successful one, and it's not. It's only the most popular one currently because it's a movie year for it. When there's not a Guardians of the Galaxy movie out, that goes away. But Captain America, Iron Man, uh, Spider-Man's always there. I'm just saying, those characters are always there. 
If that was if that was the bridge that brought everyone in, it would always be around. It wouldn't be a, just like a footnote for like some cool t-shirts at Hot Topic and like a song. Yeah, but it, the, with it using all the, the the popular music without it having all that other stuff, you know, obviously Avengers is going to be the the it, it made the most money. That's what they were building to. That was that was the epitome of of especially Phase One. Yeah, that one's going to make the most money. Um, but as far as it, you know. It especially leaning on the popular music, doing all this shit, having Chris Pratt, and and you do definitely see all the fucking uh, uh, kids that want to be cool going out these t-shirts, especially the last few months. I mean, there's a, definitely a lot of that going on. Well, because um, it's a movie year. I mean, like I said, right? But yeah, you would see. I saw more of that than I would have saw, especially for the last few Marvel movies. Well, the last few Mar- Doctor Strange is a nothing property that no one's ever heard of. Right, Civil like, War. Had more, more merchandise out there than anything. Yeah. And that was the second to last one that came out before this one. Civil War was a bigger deal. This movie's not going to do Civil War numbers. Like, I think more people are invested in the story that's there than you think. I mean, yeah, we like comic books and the movies are great, but a lot of people are invested to a point where it's like, they're, they're, you know, it's the next chapter. Like, this one, my real only complaint about this one was that it didn't connect to the rest of the MCU in a meaningful way. Again, like, the end credit sequence was the fucking Watchers walking away from Stanley because he wasn't sh- wouldn't shut up. I thought that was pretty stupid. First off, I was just like, "Oh, we waited for all those for that? Come on, like give us give us a little nugget of the fucking uh, Infinity War. Show Thanos again. Show something. Either that or Thor, you know? Yeah. Sh- well, well, well the thing Thor's is we coming know, out in November. But we know Thor is already met with Doctor Strange, mm-hmm. and so we pretty much know how Thor is going to get. To where he's going in his next movie, I think we need something that's going to like lead you a little more because it was there was a, there was a lot of nice throwbacks like to you know Howard the Duck and stuff, and there are so many references that your average people like again you're talking about the bridge. There's so much shit thrown in there for people that don't know. Like okay, I read comics. I don't know who the fuck uh, that team was with Ving Rhames and Michelle Yeoh. Who that's supposed to be? <laughs> mm-hmm. That's supposed to be some significant team. Even I don't know it. I'm like I don't know these characters. Adam Warlock. Most people in that theater didn't. They just saw a fucking um, like box with a I, shining and, light in it. And, I heard one person go, "Oh, yeah." The same guy that was crying the whole movie. <laughs> he just kept there going was, on and on. And there was even something you said in the movie, Jeff, when the when it, the plant hang over when it when it activated for the second time. Jeff was like, "Where are the Avengers? It's on Earth. They should have been alerted to something like that." That's where yeah, you they start. Were, they to were see. alerted to what was happening in the dark world. We're not worried about the dark world. We're talking about this right here because that's the same problem. No, I no, have I'm saying as an example, he said as an example, the Avengers didn't show up, and I mean, and that would have been cool. If they did, but you know, I'm just saying in terms of them using Earth as a backdrop to the movie, they did the same thing in the dark world, but you didn't see the like the. I mean, they referenced it in Agents of Shield, but that was pretty much. I would just say, but that's I literally said the same thing during Dark World. I was like, "Where are the Avengers at?" Because that's right. the one. That's the one problem they have with these movies that they never address, and it's kind of dumb. Like you could, like, okay, Ant Man even addressed this better. When you talk about an Avenger, you just had fucking the Falcon there. Like he just so happened to be on uh, mm-hmm. perimeter mm-hmm. duty. Just have like the Falcon and show. Well, no, the Falcon wouldn't be. Have like one of the people that Stark was on Civil War or uh, Team Iron Man to show up. Because you know they're working for the government, and if they know about every little detail, like if they're getting uh, fucking satellite images of Bucky's head when he's walking down the street, and they find him within five minutes, a giant blue blob that appears out in the middle of Missouri is going to show up. I mean, that's where you, there that, there are some lapses, and you're just like, oh come on! Like everything else is so tight. And no, it's for like, sure. They're Definitely, distracting yeah. you with like the jokes and the baby Groot, but then there are other parts where you're like, wait, what? And then it's like, oh. They just didn't. They didn't, you know. Yeah, like show show Nick Fury or something. Like just anything. Like a, just a little bit, a little bit. That's it. Well, like I said, I understand, or I didn't say this part, but I understand that the Avengers technically broke up, but there are still people that signed the uh, Sokovia Accords that you know are essentially like Shield well, Two Point Well, well, you, well the Avengers are still a thing. Captain, he broke them out at the end of Civil War, so there's still an Avengers thing going on. But I don't so think they, they would. They don't. I don't think they would show themselves. In Guardians of the Galaxy and get captured just for like a blue orb. Like I'm just saying, like any other hero should show up because I mean they they establish that all these things are like locked. Like they they have visual uh, contact on everything. Tony Stark's mm-hmm. got his finger in every pie. It just felt lazy. Yeah. 
Yeah, that was yeah, double yeah. entendre. Thank you. <laughs> 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 but it, it looks like uh, Yondu's going to make an appearance in uh, Avengers Infinity War. What? Okay, this is okay. First of all, this is according to IMDb, so let's take that with a grain of salt. Okay. Yeah, he's fucking dead. Well, unless yeah. it's a memory. What a flashback. <clears throat> once again, IMDb. Just saying. I stopped going to that website once they got rid of their message boards. <laughs> like I actually refused to use their website just on principle. They're like, "Oh, we make so much money outside of the message boards that we're closing it down." Well, no, they didn't use. They didn't like the message boards because the shit people talked about wasn't even like. Uh, bad. It just went against what they were trying to present, like their uh, image. And I was just like, eh, I'm done. If I can't sit and bitch about Star Wars or talk about Beverly Hills Cop, I'll leave. Well, I mean, their site's bullshit anyways. Like, anybody can go on there and say, you know, Eddie Murphy's been in, like, like 120 movies. I'm gonna go and on there and say with... Eddie, Eddie Murphy's my uncle. Yeah, like, you, yeah, you, you, yeah. It's, <laughs> it, it's worse than Wikipedia. Like, it's it's bad. Because they don't fix it either. Like, Wikipedia fixes their shit, your shit in a couple minutes. Oh, yeah. Like, IMDb, it's like, I can make up some stories. Like, did you know that Harrison Ford actually starred in an episode of Clarissa Explains It All? He was the voice of the principal. And no <laughs> one could what? verify that. And they'd be like, oh, okay. Harrison Ford, you know what? I'm going to start doing that every week. I'm going to come up with some bullshit fact, in quotation. You should, I mean, you, you should go ahead and write that on IMDb and see, see if you can car- start some sort of, like, fan like fan storm. Like, see how long it takes to, to surface. <laughs> it's the fan theory. Dude, he, took, yeah. he took pot shots at Calista with his six re- his six shoot revolver. Uh, <laughs> Dude, it, yeah, I mean, just just say dumb things like that and see 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 if it comes to the top. See if it becomes news. All it's of a sudden, I'm, like, yeah. I'm trending on Buzzfeed. Start, start the podcast with it every week. <laughs> no, no, no! I don't want people to be able it's to tie it back to news. this. No, no! I don't want to debate. I don't want this to tie back to the podcast. Like, I don't think enough people will listen to this review to where they'll be like, "Ah, oh, this is where it started." No, they'll uh. They'll just see this shit on IMDb and go, huh. Either way, it's going to help us get exposure, so whatever. <laughs> it's all about them clicks. Uh-huh. I did like that they didn't put Hooked on a Feeling in this uh, movie. I know, I, that because I, I, I remember I said that when I looked at the, the trailer, and I was like, man, I don't use that shit again, but of course it well, kind of... Everyone gets pissy when I say this, but I've always hated that song. I've never enjoyed it. I've heard it. It's not... When you talk about all the, the popular music, I'm like, that song's really not as popular. I think that movie made it popular again, and it was popular back in the day. But I, I just never... I would hear that song in, like, you know, movies that are flashing back to the 70s and just on TV, and I was like, I don't ever like this song. And so it's like, I don't oh... Think anyone really likes that song. I love that song. No, Dion, know. a lot of people like that song, and that's, I think what sold that movie, honestly, was there were, there's a contingency of people out there that like the song, they're like, well, I like that song, I'm gonna check out the movie, and then they play it, and then there's a bunch of other music that that age group may like, and it's like, oh, well, it hooked them. So do you think there was too much Baby Groot in this movie? No. I do. I do. No. Way too much Baby Groot. I thought it was really, it's like a cute character. And I didn't like to see it get beat up, but by the end of the movie, I was just like, "You have to become regular Groot, or I will never see a third one of these movies." Like, I, I would put I would put money on the table right now that the only reason Guardians of the Galaxy two takes place the way it does is so they can have Baby Groot to sell more merchandise. Oh yeah, I don't think you're not going out of limit. And I will buy that merchandise. I will not. I, will. I, I, I like Baby oh. Groot. Like I said, I think he's cute, but. I have no purpose for it. There's a tree outside. Like, if I really need to see a tree, I'll just go outside and look at it. Yeah, but he can't Groot. talk to you and say, I am Groot the whole time. Like, that's that's the problem. That's you the just, problem. I, I will go get my phone out, and I will hold up the phone to my ear, and I'll have it play I am Groot on a loop, and I'll just look at the tree and go, ah, oh, But like the tree life. can't cry, Jeff. Because trees shouldn't cry, Hillary. <laughs> because you shouldn't hurt the trees. Arbor Day! Okay, Lorax. Lorax Watkins. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, yeah, they, they were they were very heavy with maybe Groot. I mean, for obvious reasons. So, I mean, it just it, it's just, you know, trying to make money, trying to make money. That's how that happens. So. Hey, I'm not even knocking them for trying to make money. It's the nature of the beast. I'm just, for as a fan who's pretty much invested in all these movies no matter what, Baby Groot is cute, but it's time to go. It's time to grow up, Baby Groot. And I'm glad he did in the movie. No, he's grown up. He's grown up. Plus, yeah, he did but, serve a purpose being really small. Yeah, but that, you could have wrote something else in there. Like, I, like, I wanted to see him, like, I, want, I wanted to see, babe, like, Big Groot fighting 
planet shit. Like, that's what I wanted to see. And I was like, okay, you know, he's cute, and, you know, he's like the kid of the group now. That's cool, but, you know, and the button thing was funny. I'll give you that. But I want to see him smashing some dudes. Like, I think the next time we're going to see full-size Groot is when he interacts with the Hulk. Yeah. Like, that's, that's, what, my, yeah. that's my guess. I see that happen. Which that is going to be cool. Yeah, that could be interesting. Did you think it was funny when Star Lord got a Zune? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. oh my god. Oh jeez. And and it, it it's funny <coughs> it was a Zune and not an iPod. Like they went that route. That was kind of odd, but I I enjoyed it still. There's a reason they did a Zune and not an iPod. Why is they're, that? Like, they're like, hey, JC from NSYNC, remember those commercials? <laughs> we do. <laughs> Why is, is Microsoft coming out with a Zune again? Is that what's happening? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I just for, for some reason the first thing I thought it was those dumbass commercials with JC Chave from fucking NSYNC, and I was like, "See, you did something, JC. You did something." Plus, did you just something. say Chave? Yeah, <laughs> he did. I, I like how that's still it's the way to church up your name, Chavez. I don't want to sound too Hispanic, so I want to sound like exciting. So I'm Chave. But plus, but plus, it's like when when you tell me, well, "Hey, say my name, Chave," you're like, "Yeah, that dude's an asshole." Mm. <laughs> no, it was well. He's like, I found this at uh, a junk shop. Yeah, that was awesome. That was awesome. I think it that was, was my favorite joke of the whole movie. <laughs> yes, just, 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 just a joke. Three hundred songs. Three hundred songs. And so, and, was, and, and some, and some other all pre-ordered somehow with eighties music. Who knew? And now they don't have to pay Apple a shitload of money. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would have been really funny if, like, a song from, like, the 90s or 2000s came on and Star Wars was like, that sucks, and just turns it off to say Make it my way downtown, walk in yeah. that. Yeah, that was too yeah. bad. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> just, just turn it off, like, oh, shit. I honestly thought when Star-Lord came to Earth in Avengers Infinity War, he was going to get an iPod. That... <laughs> <laughs> like I thought that was gonna be a plot point for him. Like at the end of the movie, after they defeat Thanos, like Tony Stark's like, "Here, it's time to upgrade." And he hands him a saw, an iPod or whatever, and it's got like fifty thousand songs. He's like fifty thousand, and that's just like the little beat that he gets at the end of the movie. Yeah, like yeah, Tony Stark just hands him a giant hard drive. Like here's here's every song that's ever been made on Earth ever. Enjoy. He just gets into like fucking dubstep, and then I'll never watch that. <laughs> oh, oh, don't joke like that. So I just listen to Carly Rae Jepsen. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm no, not going. Really really he starts really going to those festivals and becoming a rave kid. No. What did you guys think of the Jeff Goldblum cameo? I saw that. I was pissed that they showed was... him dancing, and I was like, "Why the fuck was because he?" Because I here? remember I said he's gonna be he's gonna be in a cutscene. They wouldn't put him in full makeup unless he's in a cutscene. Nope. I was wrong. That pissed me off. <laughs> I, I I don't want to sound like a downer, but man, the, the post credit sequences sucked in this movie. Yeah, they, they were rough. They were just so, like, out of place. Like, yeah. They would have been cool if there was a big one at the end. Like, if you're doing all that little shit, and then you have, you know, Thanos or Nick Fury or someone acknowledge the shit on all these planets, I'd have been like, fuck, okay, that was worth it. But to show all that shit... And then nothing. I was like, "You guys missed on a huge." Because I, I remember hearing that there were going to be like five extra scenes. And I was like, "Cool, one of them will be really awesome." And they were all just kind of like, "Yeah, we're just doing this shit now." Hey, Iwatu, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna kill that cool little fan. Th- the one fan theory I liked. We're gonna kill that shit, and you know nothing for it. If any, you know what. I'm not one of these people that's like overly sentimental, but Jack Kirby is the guy that created all this shit. Really, Stanley just kind of put his name on it and wrote some of the dialogue. It yeah. would have been cooler if like Jack Kirby was still alive and got to interact with all the shit he actually created. Because I know everyone's like, "Oh, Stan Lee did this and Stan Lee did that." St- uh, uh, the funny thing is, a lot of people think Stan Lee drew comics. Like I've met people that are like, "Oh yeah, when Stan Lee drew the first issue," I'm like, "Stan Lee never drew a fucking comic book." Ever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, he is not an artist. Okay. Like I told some woman that and she got really upset with me. She's like, "He is. His name's on the book." I'm like, "Stan Lee." It says written by Stan Lee, which is a fucking stretch. All I know is that it would have been cool if, like, Jack Kirby survived to do all this shit. Or if they, like, CGI'd him in or something. That would have been cool. But most people wouldn't get it. They could Tupac him. (laughs) Oh, God. They're going to put a hologram in a movie? That doesn't make sense. (laughs) It don't make sense, Nick. This ain't Star Wars. (laughs) Well, they did it for Kurt Russell, though. They made him look young. And Robert Downey Jr. And Russell Douglas. 
They did a great job with with Kurt Russell's young Kurt Russell. Phil, it turn is the mic down than, a bit. Um, Tron. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's laughably bad to go back and watch Tron Legacy for many reasons. I remember but... <laughs> when I first saw it, I'm like, he looks, he looks good. <laughs> yeah, he looks yeah, 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 yeah. If you squint your eyes and tilt your head to the side, he looks good. I'm not your dad. I was trying to, <laughs> trying to make Tron be better than it was. Yeah, a lot of people did. Fuck that movie. Yeah. Speaking of this um, de-aging technology, I would be very happy if they did a whole Indiana Jones movie where they de-aged Harrison Ford. Can you do that, though, to Harrison Ford? Or would would the de-aging software just go, fuck off? (laughs) (laughs) He belongs in a museum! (laughs) He belongs in a rest home at this point. I can't believe there's a fifth one coming out. Is that, like, for sure happening? It's gonna be be him and a rascal. It's gonna be him and a rascal. Get back here! (laughs) He's like... Sean Connery in it, too. (laughs) <laughs> they're both just riding around the rascals in the jungle. Holy shit, world! <laughs> can it can it just be Bubba Hotep too? And it's and it's him and and uh, Bruce Campbell and these guys like in an old folks home and like shit trying to kill them. Can we just do that? I, I would watch it. a movie with Bruce Campbell and Harrison Ford. That'd be amazing. Is it funny that when I saw Baby Groot, I thought of D two once? I'm like, I can see D two doing something like this. <laughs> we, we actually we said that we were sitting in the theater. And the three of us were like, that. that is totally D2 and Devin pulling shit. Like, especially when, in the beginning, when he eats that bug in a rocket, it's just like, ah, spit it out, spit it out. And he hits him on the back of the head. And I was just like, we totally do shit like that all the time. And then I'm like, ah, 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 ah get that, spit that out. And the whole, because D2 is so into saying just no at this point, I'm like, that's the whole I'm group. He that's says no. Backhand him. Oh my god. The kid's too cute to smack, Phil, all right? <laughs> hey, you beat your kids. We're, we're talking about we're talking about a small child, not your midget girlfriend. <laughs> Wait, Phil has a girlfriend? <laughs> and she's so oh. little. Oh, hold, on. Phil, hold on, hold on, Phil likes girls. <laughs> <laughs> when did you become Dustin, Phil? Like, Jesus, stop about <laughs> being a fuck, child. <laughs> not cool. Um... What else do you guys want to say about this movie? It was good. I liked it. Uh, Dan wanted me to say that he gives it an 8 out of 10. Nobody cares think... what Dan thinks. Well, that's a good segue. What, what, what number would you guys give it out of 10? I'd give it, I'll also give it an 8. It was... If the first Guardians of the Galaxy is like a 7... I'll give this an 8.5 because I really enjoyed it. I liked it that it wasn't... Um, overly... Like, it didn't jump all over the place. Mm-hmm. I liked that it stayed in one location. It was about the characters. It, I don't know. It was just it was a lot deeper, and that's what I was. I always look for in these movies, you know, to bring legitimacy to comic books. And this one did it. It wasn't as dumb and like out there as the first one. The beginning was, and it was a nice segue into something heavier. So, eight point five out of ten. What do you give it there, Hilby? I would give it a solid nine out of ten. Damn. Yeah, I really liked it. More than Dion? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, like, as a person, she likes that movie more than you as a human being. No, I would give Dion a 9.5 out of 10 because there's always room for improvement. <laughs> oh, oh, are you calling me fat? <laughs> what? No, she's, she's calling you an asshole. Oh, oh. Speaking of asshole, Phil, what do you give the movie? <laughs> um, I'd give it an 8. Uh, I even said it to Jeff. I... I, you know, I'm not a big comic book reader, so I didn't know a whole lot about it. I felt that the movie, it didn't seem to be going anywhere until he revealed, until Ego revealed himself as a bad guy. So, you know, that was what, the last 40, 40 minutes of the movie? So, well, I, none I, of us I, here I have felt... ever really got into the. I don't yeah, think Jeff I've never read, read comic Gal- books, and we don't read Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't think, I, I've never met someone that's a Guardians of the Galaxy fan pre movie. No, hell no. One person. Well, I, I, just, I just felt that we went, you know, it, 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 that movie was two hours and 15 minutes. Didn't feel like I, it at all. No, it didn't, no. It, it, it kept you engaged, and that's why I, give, I still give it a good score. I just felt like it wasn't going anywhere until he revealed himself as a bad guy, and that was the last 40 minutes of the I think that's another reason why I don't like but the it's still, Guardians so much. Film over. Because, no, like, that's why I get on Guardians and certain things, like, entertainment-wise, where it's, like, it's for short attention spans, and it kind of ruins 
stuff that has like a, a slow burn or a, a strong build. Because when people, when the popular shit's the real vapid stuff that just kind of ends, you know, it doesn't really have a lot of meaning. And people go see it, well, then they make more shit like that. And this one, it just had better themes. Like, I'll put it like this. In Fast and the Furious, when Vin Diesel goes about family, I roll my eyes and just, I'm like, this is so dumb. <laughs> in this one, when they say about, about being a family, family, I'm like, I see that. Like, it's legit. It's about no, that's a good point. What do, you, uh, what do you give it there, Nick? I give it 8.5. I, I really like it. I liked it better than the first one because they really dove into a lot of those character story. Um, you learn more about uh, the two sisters and their them growing up as kids. Um, you hear a lot of stories uh, from Kurt Russell and him, you know, being going on Earth and his purpose and everything. Um, you break down um, Rocket Raccoon and Yondu and how they're, well, you know, and like their whole thing of like being tough guys and being assholes. But it's like, you know, if we don't, then we're just going to be crying in the corner. I wish yeah. Yondu wasn't dead. Like, yeah, I mean, like he, that, like that was, was so that good. was the like, like he, like he fucking brought it in the end, and I was like, shit, like he's, you know, he's he's the unsung hero of the movie, and it was like it was See, so good. The Jazz Whedon. Well, look at let me tell you, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump back to I'm gonna jump back to something that Dust is not gonna like. Star Wars Episode Seven. No character grows in that fucking movie. Nope. They just do things and instantly get better. Yondu grows and you learn about him. That is a well-written character in a Got science it. fiction film. Not Rey from The Force Awakens. Not Kylo Ren. Not Finn or Poe Dameron. None of that bullshit. Those are poorly written characters that are hollow cardboard cutouts. I can't believe I'm saying this, but a painted blue Michael Rooker is deeper than most Star Wars people. An animated They're... raccoon is deeper than most Star Wars people. Yes. Don't call him a raccoon. Burn! <laughs> okay, fine. Trash Panda, I'm sorry. Is that, is that better? <laughs> that was really good. That's actually way worse. I just loved how they all played off each other. They did a great yeah. job. I mean, yeah, they, I gotta. Good. Uh, uh, fuck! I lost my train of thought. God damn it! Oh, so uh, no, no, I was yeah, gonna... I think I think as far as they they did a great job of casting these dudes, and in the second movie proved it for sure. I was gonna ask you, how did your theater react when you found out that Ego gave the mom cancer? Everyone literally went. Oh, I verbally said, "Oh shit!" And everyone kind of went. Mm. Our theater went <gasps> like that. It was like a fucking cartoon. Like, <gasps> <laughs> Gasp! Yeah, I, I didn't see that coming. I thought I, I loved the stories he was telling Star Lord about. You know, like before his real plan came out. I was like, "Oh man, this is awesome!" You know, like. You know, he's going to find his dad, and unlike a lot of the movies where you find out he's a piece of shit, it's like, I couldn't come back, because I was picking up, like, oh, I guess she was sick, and he couldn't stand to be around her, and then he's like, I, and then, when he started telling his plan, I'm like, I bet he gave his wife or girlfriend or whatever she was cancer, and then, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I was like, oh, no, it's real, the, the, the fantasy's over, and then Star-Lord <laughs> comes right out of it, I was like, oh, shit, <laughs> And I, I, I wish they would have done one thing because sometimes the jokes go a little too far, and this was it. When he goes, "You killed my mom and broke my Walkman," I wish I would have said, "You killed my mom," because that would have been cool. Like with Iron Man, when he uh, goes after the Winter Soldier, he doesn't care about his dad getting murdered. He's like, "You killed my mom," and goes after to kill him. I, I just liked the intensity in those two performances, but I think the and crushed by Walkman kind of killed it. Like, well, I, that's I, that's why, and I kind of feel like an asshole. Because I'm actually, a, once again, in the minority. But I was like, I gave it a seven and a half. A solid seven and a half. But all the fucking, the popular music in the movie bothered me. It reminded me too much of fucking Suicide Squad. And yes. then, you know, the Pac-Man reference was, was, was kind of silly. Oh, fuck you, I love that. And then, of course you did, right? It's it's the bridge. But, um... <laughs> uh, <laughs> broken-ass bridge. And then... And then, you know, that moment kind of, like, there was, the, the jokes, I thought it was one of the funnier movies that they've done, but a lot of them were just so, like, out of place, you know, especially, you know, and you broke my Walkman, and that was just so, I was like, it's, it, it, I could have a real emotional attachment to this scene, but you snap me out of it with this joke. It's a funny joke, but it, 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 it lessens the emotional impact of what's going on, and that's why I was kind of like, ah! But it kind of plays off of Star-Lord, because... He—that's what he hides behind his humor. But I think so, at that point he she wasn't like everything was out in the open. Yeah. No, no, no. Like, and he, I mean, the, yeah, I mean, when, when, he, when he talks about his mom, he's very—he's always been like very particular about that. So for him to make a joke like that is kind of just like I would—I really do think it's out of place. Yeah. Like, 
like even in Spider Man, the character that makes jokes, like when he's talking about Uncle Ben at the end of the first movie, like he's you know he's deadly serious. And I just I just like even when a jokey character can become serious in a moment because that tells you that the scene is so important. And I don't think they did that too well. I I do think talking about the rating though, Dion. I think a lot of these critics are just up their own asses about oh, these for things. Sure. I like to read these reviews. Holy shit. Because they're, they're like, well, it's so much of the same, but it's better. It, it, I don't think it was a lot of the same. The first Guardians, to me, okay, I'm going to put this in a, in a way Dion will understand and most people won't. Guardians 1 and 2, it's a lot like Beverly Hills Cop 1 and 2, mm-hmm. minus the quality. I, the th- there are things I like about Beverly Hills Cop 2 more than 1, mainly the relationship between Taggart, Bogomil, or no, Taggart, Rosewood, and uh, Axel. Axel, yeah. I love the first movie. But I like that they're friends already in the second one. That's what I like about this one so much more. Because the first one was all about them trusting and all this shit. Mm. I like it when it's just like, hey, we're already friends. Let's go and let's see where we can go with this. And I think everyone did a great job. Even Zoe Saldana was cool. And I don't think she's the world's greatest actress. Definitely not. Nope. So does this get you any more excited for Thor? And does it get you excited or interested in Infinity Wars? Infinity well, I, I think, I think it doesn't get me more excited for Thor. It gets me more excited for Spider Man, um, mainly because it's kind of like the hey, you know, we, we're 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 still on top of shit, guys. Have faith, I, you know. More, so I'm definitely more excited for Spider Man, not like leaps and bounds. I don't know if I can get any more excited for Ragnarok. If they come out, if they come out with a better fucking trailer, I may just fucking. Just come in my pants. I don't know. I can't get any more excited for that. But it definitely, it, it and going back to what we said before, it doesn't really add anything to the rest of the universe. I'm not more excited for Infinity Wars after this, but it definitely keeps my 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 palate wet for sure. I'm definitely like, okay, give me give. I'm 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 gearing up for Infinity Wars here. I. I am pumped. I hope they don't release another Thor trailer. I honestly hope that that's the only one they put out because it's so awesome and it tells you everything you need to know without telling you the plot at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't want to know more right now. I just I want to see the movie. And I I told Jeff earlier I can't I can't believe we got to wait till November to see. Yeah, I I mean I don't want to skip the summer months, but I kind of want to skip the summer months to watch Thor. <laughs> like I know that movie. Okay. That movie is going to be way more entertaining than the Justice League. It's oh gonna be God, just ass! It's going to be no, the Justice no ass. question. Yeah. Critically, I say it beats the Justice League hands down. Financially, I say it's a close race. No really? man, I think I don't, and I, and I, 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 I don't want to rehash what we talked about a couple episodes ago. But I think that's what I. I DC's just they've damaged the brand so much now. It's <laughs> they've. Oh. they've the, the, they were shitting in a bucket full of water, and the shit kept sinking. Now the turds are above the fucking waterline, man. And I don't think people are gonna buy it for just. I really don't. They produce legendary turds. No, um, <laughs> did you did you hear about that Wonder Woman uh, bullshit that's going on right now? How they're trying. Yeah. Uh, they're like, oh, they're not promoting the movie because it's a female led film. The movie, okay, you don't prom- <laughs> you're not gonna heavily promote it too early because it's gonna get lost in the fray yes. of the mummy. And Baywatch and a bunch of other movies that are coming out. It's kind of like throwing money away. When is- It'll make its money back, but they're, they're like, oh, let's show the boys how a real superhero looks and all this shit. Look, Wonder Woman's not going to make what a Batman movie's going to make because it's not no. as popular as a character. It's well, not plus, even a female The thing that thing. pisses me off about it is, listen, I get it. You you know, a female character, you know, hey, I, I could I could, I could could get that sentiment that you want one. And, and, and you know, and Wonder Woman is... Uh, I, 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 a, 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 not, I wouldn't say an important part, but she's definitely a part of of the comic book movie thing that's happening. But one, the studio she's a part of is making shit movies, and two, you're not going to go watch Wonder Woman. Stop getting pissed off. You're not going to watch it. And I can prove that because you don't know shit about Wonder Woman. I don't read a lot of Wonder Woman. I can promise you, whoever's saying that, we collectively, you can pick any one of us, and we know more about Wonder Woman than you fucking do. You're not going to yeah, go watch the fucking movie. 
And if you get Joel in on this, he's going to bore you with all the information from the George Perez uh, Wonder Woman run. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah you, 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 know what, you know what? If, if you're all about some Wonder Woman, go go us all, Joel. We'll, we'll we'll give you all his his we'll, we'll give you his new address to his new house and his his email and his Twitter and everything else. You can go ask him your bullshit fucking questions. I will I will give you his social security number if you ask me nicely. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just brought that up or wanted to bring that up because I thought. It's going to be old news by next week, so it's just it's just making me laugh that they're trying to pull this gender politics shit with a movie again. It's like if you want people to get excited for a female led movie, don't market it like Ghostbusters, where if you don't watch it, you're a sexist. That 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 doesn't work at all. No, 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 because <laughs> you, you you're basically calling your customers assholes, and if you do that, they're not going to come buy your shit. Yeah. That's just how it's, that fucking works. I'm, I'm just saying, like, they, look, I'm not, I don't want to get political, but they tried to pull that shit with the election. It didn't work. They tried it with Ghostbusters. It didn't work. It just doesn't work because you're painting too many people with a broad brush, and those people aren't what you say they are. Look it. Maybe if you make an awesome movie, or maybe if you build a fucking good universe, people are going to go rush out to see your movies. Um, You know, all the Marvel movies have made a huge profit. None of them are flops or even close to being flops. Even the lower end ones like The Incredible Hulk still made like double their money back. So whatever. But Batman v Superman barely broke even. Suicide Squad barely broke even. Like these movies aren't huge hits. Don't blame Wonder Woman being a woman on, you know, a lack of excitement. Yeah, blame blame it, Zack Snyder. Blame Zack Snyder and blame your shitty writing in your studio and all the bullshit you're trying to pull. You're trying to play catch up. You're not going to fucking do it. You're going to be you're going to fall victim if you want people to stop, like, not recognizing women, write a good woman character. Ooh, and Bob, right. don't, and, Phil, and what are you don't doing, try man? To, and don't try to make it like a fucking... Don't copy uh, make, things. Make it well, a... that too, but, but, like, make it an actual, like, character that we can relate to or understand. Don't make her, like, an ideal. Like, Ray from The Force Awakens is an ideal. That's not a character. That's an ideal with long hair. Like, that is not... <laughs> Princess Leia is a real character. The Black Widow is a real character. Scarlet Witch will eventually be a real character. Like, you're learning about her. She's got layers and depth and emotions, and she feels for an android. It's like, it's interesting. There's shit to talk about with her. Based on the Batman v Superman appearance, Wonder Woman is a fucking robot who reads email attachments during a fucking battle where she's needed the most. <laughs> and she's fucking lazy and greedy because she could have prevented Superman from dying because... She's just she can cut off Doomsday's arm and do all these things. Why couldn't her fucking ass throw the spear into Doomsday's chest? Why? Because we have to have some bullshit sobby ending or sobby ending where like, oh, you're gonna come. No, back, not blah, even blah, blah, sobby. Blah. That, that, and that and that and, and and I think you touched on something. And we get it. Jeff and Dion are shitting on DC movies. One, they deserve it. Two, fuck you. But <laughs> fuck you. But the fact that they they want to copy existing story, they want to copy the death of Superman so bad. They're going to sacrifice the movie that they're making just so they can say, hey, remember that thing that you read a bunch of years ago, The Death of Superman, and that really cool animated movie, Superman Doomsday? We're going to reference that. You want to see that, don't you? Come watch our movie. Give me money. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, you made me think of a really relevant point, and I can't believe I'm going to say this. I think more people, and including myself in this, are were moved by the death of Yondu, a one-note character that has only been in one movie, than Superman, a mm -hmm. character that's older than everyone uh, that's alive on this podcast and that, uh, that listens to our podcast. Superman's been a part of pop culture for 80 years at this point. Mm -hmm. 1937. Superman is a part of pop culture. He dies in the movie. Everyone just bitches how dumb the movie is. How... How can Warner Brothers, a company that has just as many assets as fucking Disney, not produce something excellent? You know? You own all your characters. You can do anything you want. We were all moved by the death of Michael Rooker in blue paint. <laughs> yeah. not, the man of, not the Man of Steel who sacrificed himself to save the planet. No, Yondu, the guy who you realized was a father to Star-Lord the whole time, and we all had this big revelation. We all thought, wow, what a great character. Yeah, and, and that's all. That's also another thing. Is like, yeah, you realize that he's been the father the whole time. As like, once they have like those little cutscenes, you're like, oh, and everybody has that aha moment, and you know, it's it's fucking amazing. And that's why I think I really like this movie as much as I do because it, not like I didn't like tear up or anything, but it was like emotional in a good way. It's like, mm -hmm. wow, mm -hmm. there's so much to this shit. It's like real people, but just in outer space. Well, no, that's that, why I like it, the original Star a, Wars. They do such a great job of like grounding them. So like you, it's you know, Star Lord's a human 
on this crazy ass adventure, but in and you can and his dad is wowing him with seeing the universe from a god's perspective. But the minute he goes, Yeah, I gave your mom cancer, he fucking snaps out of it and just guns him down. Like that is like that's like I feel like that's the most humor like if someone told me they gave Hillary or Jeff or I, I guess Phil cancer, <laughs> I'd wanna fucking shoot him in the face. Like that that's the most human reaction to that revelation and you know it, gar- it was just so fucking also cool wait hold on hold on hold on hold on also why don't i get cancer what is, it, is something wrong with me do i not am i not listen you're samoan dude. You're, you guys you guys Samoan. are the world's warriors you guys are like fighting spam and shit you guys fight heart pressure and shit you ain't i was cancer. i was deeply offended that <laughs> you didn't mention me that i got cancer i was like what am i not good enough good enough for cancer can i just kill cancer what's what's wrong with me why can't i get cancer Do well you know? i was giving why? you a break i was sexually assaulting you in florida so i thought you wanted a little bit of space <laughs> I say most Samoans <laughs> die of overdose anyway, don't they? Deanna, miss you. How did Yokozuna die? <laughs> he ate himself to death. <laughs> no, but realistically, people are always like, "Oh, you shit on DC movies." Well, DC movies deserve it. Mm-hmm. And you ha- look at comparatively speaking, it's embarrassing because Marvel can take a Z-list cast of characters and make them A-list. While DC can take their A-list characters, arguably two, the two most popular comic book characters, and make garbage movie after garbage movie, and the spin-offs are garbage movies. It's like, 2016 had to be the worst year for DC, because their movies just made enough money, and like, but critics ripped those movies apart. Mm-hmm. I'm still sticking by um. that Wonder Woman's going to get great reviews based on... Um, an agenda over quality of film because we saw with Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters was a flop financially. The real people came out and spoke with their wallets, but the blogosphere and all these reviewers were like, "It's a shit movie." And then people that, or if they said it was a great movie, the people that said it was a shit movie were getting terrible uh, threats and stuff. So expect Wonder Woman to sit at like an eighty-five percent, and it's gonna be a champion for female empowerment. It's not gonna be ever based on the quality of the fucking film. Guarantee it. I'll put five dollars down. That's my Will limit. Will it be better or worse than Electra? <laughs> Anything's better than Electra. Hillary, I turned that movie off. It was so bad. <laughs> well, um, I, I, I looked at what Wonder Woman to find the date, and you know, I'm on the just the Google page, and it, I'm looking at the time of the movie, and it says two hours fifty five minutes. What? what? The, what the, the runtime of the movie is almost three hours. From what? No, 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 no. That's the Titanic. Here, I'll, I'll take a picture and, and send it to you right now. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not even like a, a super villain in that movie, dude. We no, you don't have to have to prove it. We believe you 100. Yeah. percent that's a problem. It's three hours of Wonder Woman. I don't even want 90 minutes of her. She's a shit actress. I don't care. Oh, she's gorgeous. Gal Gadot, or however you pronounce her last name, is good looking in the face. Her body is toned, you but she's too good to be You can't understand what the Woman. fuck she's saying. Thank you. I'll put money down now and say Chris Pratt steals the show. You mean Chris... Pine, motherfucker. Pine. Chris Pine, sorry. <laughs> Chris, Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt um, already did steal the show. They're both good um, like Chris is. Give him a break. Who would win in a fight, Hillary? Hey, Chris Pratt sure. or Chris Pine? Ooh, probably Chris Pratt at this Pine. point now that he's all muscular and shit. But, like, what, five years ago when he was first on Parks and Rec? Definitely Chris Pine. It is killing me. This movie comes out June 2nd. I just don't think there's a lot of hype for it. And it's not a sexist thing. <coughs> No, there really isn't. I've I haven't seen any commercials or anything like that about it. So it's. It, I mean, I'm sure like you know a week or a month before it happens, they're gonna assault your, you know, every sense you have with Wonder Woman. Well, one so. thing I did notice is that they're trying to pull this uh, shit with the toys now. Because if you go to the uh, and this must be like a Toys R Us corporate thing, but if you go to the Batman section of the store, because it's called the Batman DC section, it's mostly Batman. Wonder Woman has, like, a couple figures, but then all of a sudden, like, dolls are over in the, the boys' toys section. And it's not about, like, trying to be progressive. Just as a business, they always separate the toys. Like, Dion, you have a kid. You know how the toy store works. Right, oh yeah. I am a kid. I know how the toy store works. <laughs> and I find it funny that they're promoting this, even in the toy store. It's like, hey, a boy can have a doll if he wants. But, and here I'm going to use an anecdotal piece of, uh information and use it as a fact even though it's not really a fact but i went to toys r us on saturday super busy day um they had the wonder woman toys out and i saw a kid look at it and then i saw him go pick up a spider-man figure and beg his mom for it like 
it's I don't think <laughs> these little kids are sexist that they don't want a Wonder Woman figure. And the, the figures are just okay made. I mean, they're all pretty shitty quality. I just find it funny that they're trying to, like, use this movie as another platform, and it's just... It's kind of embarrassing, because I like Wonder Woman as a character. Linda Carter kicked ass. Oh, God, yeah. D2, he plays equally with his Batman as he does with his Peppa Pigs. Not gonna lie. But does D2 honestly understand that Peppa Pig is a girl? I know Devin does, and he still plays with it a lot. Oh, no, I'm not saying he wouldn't play with it if it was a girl. I'm just saying, I don't think... I think it's a it's a pig above all. I don't think D two even could understand like, you know, like oh it's it's it's, it's Peppa Pig. Okay. I I don't know. I've never seen him play with a Wonder Woman figure. I don't. I don't think he'll ever unless you buy him one. We just have to get a girl one. toy here for McDonald's that we somehow got. He likes that one. I don't know what it is though. I, hey, I had Princess Leia and I played with her all the well, not all the time, but she was part of the group. Yeah. Wherever the rest of them went, she went mm. to. There you go. Is it really three hours, Nick? I mean, I believe you, but Jesus Christ! No, I'm, I'm looking. I swear to God, like I just, I was looking through, I was looking, trying, trying to remember the date and just figure out when it was coming out and the budget and everything. And then I look, you know, it says Wonder Woman PG-13, 2017, fantasy action, and then it goes two hours, fifty-five minutes. I'm like, that's that's three hours. That's a fucking Transformers movie there. And I was like, I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if I could honestly do that. <laughs> If they give you a three-hour movie, that is going to fucking kill it at the box office. And I don't mean it's going to kill it at the box office. I mean it's going to die a horrible death. <laughs> three-hour movies are a hard sale. Yeah, and they're hard to time, and they're they're it's just difficult to, to do anything with them at all. And I, even then, if they ever bring out an extended version of that movie on DVD or Blu-ray, you're talking, what, three and a half hours? Fuck you. I, I, it's so shitty. Like, it's not even like a... I just feel bad for DC. It's like, come on, guys. One one hit? One hit. <laughs> Honestly, Wonder Woman should be like an 85, 88-minute movie. Make it quick, make it concise, tell your story, and then get the fuck out. Well, they're going to try... Look it. It's going to go on, and then we're going to... I mean, if they do strong world building, that's great in the beginning, because we have to know what Themyscira is and all this stuff. But then we're going to get to the like America or World War One, and it's going to get preachy. We're going to hear about how man's world is terrible and how we shouldn't be fighting this war and this and that. And it's like, oh god, like we live in a really shitty time politically. Can we not? Can we just go to a movie and not care? <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's going to be like you know, it's going to be let's see, three hours. It's going to be two hours of feminist bullshit and an hour of action and you know, you know, her fighting. That's all it's going to be. Well, let's... Titanic. <laughs> now remember though, Hillary, Titanic <laughs> was out in theaters for God knows what, six months? Yes, but that's because uh, James Cameron. Oh no, I agree with you. I'm saying Titanic, but all I was just saying is Titanic was is the biggest movie of all time. I know, and it's I'll... one of the hardest to sit through too. <laughs> Do you like it? I enjoy it in pieces. In pieces. <laughs> I don't think I've ever sat down and watched the whole entire movie from start to finish. I've never done okay, that. Okay, okay. Titanic is three hours and 15 minutes. And that was on two VHSs, too. <laughs> or, or you know, one one DVD. Um, I used to watch a VHS, Nick. That's why well, I never right. sat well, through the well, whole thing all at well, once. Well, now they now they have the Blu-ray. You can watch it in HD and, you know, really get to the fine detail of it. Uh, Rose and Jack Fox, one of them dies at the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, actually, Rose, I mean, Jack didn't have to die. Rose is just a selfish bitch. Let, let's be honest. Yeah, but one of the, I didn't say everyone was at fall. You're just assuming now. Jesus. One of them dies the end. <laughs> I mean, I think it's okay to spoil a 20-year-old uh, movie at this Celine point. Celine Dion. Her what? husband died. Aww. Yeah, see, she was a selfish bitch, too. They were they were in the water, and, you know, he, she, she could have saved him. <laughs> Phil, are you awake? He's fucking snoring over there. Phil's asleep! And he's off the call now. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to have him snore on the podcast. I mean, we were we were making good points about Yondu and shit. Not... And that's why you don't get invited, Phil. That's why I don't get invited. Insulin ran low. <laughs> I thought one one uh, more character that I thought was impressive was fucking Nebula. 
I don't normally like... I didn't like her in the first movie at all, but I thought she was well done in this movie, and I cared about her. For sure, yeah. Her little, uh... Her, uh, revelation to Gamora, like, yeah, you were... You cared about winning, and I just wanted to have you as a sister. I was like, god damn, dude. Like, that fucking hit me right in the gut with that one. Yeah, and I mean, um... I kept reading that she wasn't even supposed to be in this movie. Like it was, it was a toss up. They they weren't they weren't gonna have her, but then like I think uh, James Gunn or whatever like pushed to have her in the movie and have her be you know a uh, part of it. Good call on his part. Yeah, I, I liked her in it. She was pretty pretty legit. That one guy too was awesome. Uh, uh, Yondu's co-captain or whatever. Yeah, the the guy dude that from, um, from Gilmore, Gilmore Girls. Girls. Oh my god, I love him with Kirk. Oh um, uh, let's see, Cart. Yeah. Craiglin? What? I think I think so. Name. Wasn't isn't that James Gunn's brother? Yeah, yeah. Sean Gunn. Yeah. Sean Gunn. <laughs> yep, that's him. He's in he's in so much shit too. He just randomly pops up in places. I love it. Well, I but, wish he would randomly pop up on this podcast. That guy did a great job. <laughs> the part where he was crying at, when Yondu, Yondu's funeral, I was like, Jesus Christ, everyone's doing a great job. Yeah, man. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I didn't mean the mutiny. They killed all my friends. I was like, you poor bastard. I'm so glad he lived. I was too. I was. I was really scared that he was gonna die too. I was like, "Don't kill him." Where you lead, I will follow. Sean Gunn. Easy, easy. The yeah, kid. yeah, yeah. Also, remember, Sean Gunn started off with with trauma, so there there's some questionable shit he made back in the day. <laughs> he was also an angel. But I'm just saying, have you have you ever seen a trauma movie before? Episode. He randomly showed up. Oh. It was great. I loved it. Nick, I've seen many trauma films, and they're shit. Yeah, see, that's why it's like, let, let, let's, let's be careful of the whole shot, like, you know, James Gunn train here. Remember, though, he did make Slither, and that movie was awesome. Yep, with Michael Rooker as well. Yeah, shit. <laughs> <I forgot about that. laughs> well, let's not forget about Mallrats with Michael Rooker. <laughs> you want some pretzels? Mmm, <laughs> they're a bit <laughs> melty. <laughs> yeah, like, okay, the first, let's see, the first... Uh, four or five movies he did with with trauma. It was like Tromeo and Juliet. And he did a ha- Sergeant Kabuki Man public service announcement. The Tromaville Cafe, the specials, uh, Citizen Toxie, the Toxic Avenger Part Four, and then he goes into like he goes into like the, the I guess mainstream. He did Scooby Doo in two thousand two, which was his first mainstream movie. Wait. Hey Dion, I got some good news and some bad news for you. Oh shit. So we have to wait all the way till November for Thor, right? Uh, yeah. That's the good news. Oh, oh, God. We have to wait an entire year from today till Avengers Infinity War comes out. Oh, my God. I cannot <laughs> wait. But there's so much good stuff coming out in the meantime. Defenders. I know, but the Infinity Green War is going to be... It could be, like, the greatest movie ever made. No, it know. literally could. There's the potential for it to be the greatest fucking movie ever I made. Know. But you Jeff and I were born to see this fucking movie. Every, <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Every comic book TV show, every comic book, re- it has led to net to, to to May 2018. We got possibly, possibly a good a good Spider Man movie. I don't care. Possibly, I don't we, care. We I want to see that. Tha- I want to see Defenders. You got Daredevil coming back and Defenders. I want to see Thanos go to like punch Captain America and he blocks it with the shield. Like the shield breaks, but then Captain America's like. Oh fuck! My friends are all hurt, and like he rallies everyone to fight. Oh, I can't even fucking deal with this. Dion, you pretty much uh, summed it up for me. Like this could be the biggest movie ever. Like it's yes. been building our whole lives. Because seriously, even before we wanted a Thanos movie, we wanted this movie. Like we just knew one day they would make something this epic, mm-hmm. and this will literally be the culmination of ten years of our lives. Ten mm-hmm. years, our entire friendship. Yes, <laughs> has, has been has existed during the MCU, and like. Clearly, our friendship's not going to end when the MCU is over. But like, right. for me, this is like the culmination of like the superhero craze. I think after these two come out, it's going to f- fade away pretty quick. Oh, for sure, it's, it's definitely going to be the giant nut, and then everyone's going to kind of like roll over and fall I'm, asleep. This might be a silly question. <laughs> so what was the first movie? Iron, Iron Man. Man. Was it Iron Man? Yeah. Why am I thinking Hulk? Because it was the same year. Okay. Yeah, so it came out like a month after. Yeah, <laughs> literally. Iron Man's the only movie. Iron Man and Ant Man that we did not see together. That's true. We did go see Hulk together. Didn't yeah, we? I saw. I saw, yeah, no, I saw Iron see... Man with DJ Enzo. You did. I did. How was it to watch Ant Man on Blu-ray without Hillary Dion? 
It I was... fucking hate you. Don't talk about it. <laughs> I think it's funny. <laughs> and it's just funny because, like, when you said, like, our friendship is the universe, I literally remember us just, like, hanging out here was at work, and you're just like, let's watch Ant-Man. I'm like, yeah, let's watch Ant-Man. <laughs> like, like, it was, it was like, eh, this, yeah, I love you, babe, but can't wait to see Ant-Man, bruh. Can't wait to see Ant-Man. So up next on the radar for MCU films is Spider-Man. Uh, not that excited for it. It's it's kind of like a movie. I'm just gonna go see it for the podcast, but yeah, like, Killer Joke. We'll finally get a. Well, she goes like, we'll finally get a good Spider-Man movie. Ah, uh, we had two great ones, and then yeah. the third one kind of. Uh, no, I'm saying you know. after after the last two, we need something better. Uh, look, it. You guys know that Spider-Man's my favorite character, but I like that he's really not important to the MCU. I kind of wish he would never have shown up. But he's important being, to the Avengers, though. Not really. That's because when to he... you, but I'm glad that he's in it. I, I definitely feel like he's the he's one of the biggest faces of Marvel, right? And, and you're right. But as far as like the, the the universe was okay without him, I just like that. And, and thinking back, I think if if if, if Infinity War would have happened without Spider Man, it definitely would have been like the girl who got away feeling for me. So, if... so I'm glad he's back, but I'm just like. Yeah. I'm glad he's here, but it's just like, I really... And the MCU will survive if it's not that great of a movie, but I just, I need Homecoming to be good. So the serious it. question for Jeff. Yo. So there has to be some Spider-Man content made. That's that's going to be the, the underlying guideline. If Sony didn't have the rights Marvel did, would you rather see movies of Spider-Man or them going like a Netflix route? Netflix route, because Spider-Man is a a street level hero. Yeah, he's got superpowers, but his greatest stories are like on a bridge or on the side of a building I... or underwater. It's not like Spider-Man needs to take a fucking ferry and web it together and have Christ imagery. Like <laughs> I have so many I, I hate the trailer for Homecoming. <laughs> like I'm not trying to be like mean about it, but the trailer sucks and there's so many things they did wrong. It's like oh, his one friend has to know he's Spider-Man. No. It always was better when he had to run off and do shit, and people were like, that guy's an asshole. Like, why, you know, why does he run off? And no one could know. Like, it was always better when he had to keep the identity secret. Plus, I didn't now, see any Flash Thompson. Yeah, you did. He's a he's not white. I know, but I did like, they didn't make it clear. Oh. Well, he's that, uh, you ever see that Wes Anderson movie, the one about the hotel? Nope. <laughs> well, Nick, you know talk Wes about? Anderson, nope. Oh, the, uh, the... Bates, not Bates Motel, Grand Budapest. Grand Budapest, yeah. There you go. It would be, yeah, 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 the, yeah. Bell, the bellhop in that movie is Flash Thompson. The Indian guy? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's him. That's such a weird casting choice. That's, a, that's why I'm getting... Uh, that's why I don't like this movie, because every other MCU film stayed true to how the character looked and acted. They could have just this... made an Indian guy that wasn't named Flash Thompson. Yeah, that's, true. That's they they could have. They could have. If you if you have to have all these other shades of people, because you know people can't like a character that's not the same color as them. <clears throat> Sarcasm. Then don't name him Flash Thompson. Don't make uh, Gwen State or Liz Allen Hispanic. Don't make whatever. Just let the real characters that are part of the comic book lore stay there and be how they look, and then bring in. You know, make John, what is his face, Patel, be the big bully and have Flash Thompson be busy. <laughs> John well, Patel, Flash, God, I hope it's Flash Thompson is just a big Jack bully, asshole. Yeah. And he was awesome because him and Peter grew to be good friends. Crazy. And then, didn't he get paralyzed? Yeah, he became the he new lost, Venom. He lost his legs in war. Yeah. He became the new Venom, which was actually pretty which cool. Which he kind of deserved, because he was a dick. Ah, it was an awesome story, because in the comic book, it talks about how Flash, um, it shows him in a hospital, and he's talking about how he was in this battle, and how this friend was pinned down, and in the moment when he needed the strength, he thought of Spider-Man, and how Spider-Man's done all these great things, and it shows him mm -hmm. go through this battle, and there's a big explosion, and the comic literally ends with him laying in bed without legs, and you're just like, wow. <laughs> yeah. It was really, it, it hit you, like, god damn, that's hard. <laughs> Like, that's... The, I like that shit. Like, not that he lost his legs, but that kind of emotion. Like, boom. Yeah, speaking Nick, of, I'm wearing my Spider-Man shirt tonight. 
I mean, wait, 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 what, what did you ask? Are you excited for Spider Man? I have a Captain America shirt on, by the way, Hillary. <laughs> Okay, baby. Okay, baby. Shut up. I'm I'm skeptical as you are because they've rebooted him twice now, and this is the third time. Sorry, yeah, this is yeah, no, no, this is no, sorry, this is the second time, second time they, re- they rebooted him, and I'm just like, ah, you know, Marvel has a really good track record, but it's just like Spider Man hasn't, so I'm I'm worried, and rightly so. The last two Spider Man movies have been garbage. Also, the, the the guy you thought was Indian is actually the, another another. He's he's Mexican. He's not he's not Indian. He's the other other type of brown guy. But he is the same actor. Correct. Yeah, he's the same one. Yeah, but he's not Indian. Okay. Well, I knew it was the same actor, and uh, whatever. It's called the Grand Budapest Hotel. Yeah, Grand Budapest Hotel. Right. That's what you said. Yep. Budapest. The Ving Rhames Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what was it? What was it? It's a safe word. Blueberry waffles? <laughs> what? Oh, from, uh... James Vandermeek. From, uh... Oh, yeah. Get Hard. I was thinking of the part in Pulp Fiction when, uh, he's like, we're gonna get some real hard pipe hitting, and he's like, we're gonna get, uh... Medieval on your ass. Yeah, what the fucking, what was it, like, clamps and shit? And yeah. blow torches? Some hot irons! You hear me, hillbilly boy? Like the lamest insult, hillbilly boy. Like I just got fucked in my ass. Give me a break. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. He, he just got raped by a man. Let him uh, come down easy. But <laughs> intended. Mm-hmm. Dion, I know you're not a really big Spider-Man fan, but does Homecoming interest you? It does, man. Like you know, I'm I, I I've always liked Spider-Man enough. I wasn't never a huge fan, but like I said, but you know, I I always. Knew, I always wanted him to be portrayed greatly. The first two were fantastic. Obviously, I was, you know, hurt with the third one. And then, God, the Amazing Spider-Man was just such hot garbage, you know. And even though there are definitely parts I don't like about the trailer, you know, I think, you know, Michael Keaton as bad. I mean, Vulture is so good. Uh, <laughs> I'm I, glad I, you're not letting that joke die. Hell no. You know, I I, I, I I did I remember I do remember not liking the bar scene, but I do <sighs> in high school, but you know, and I, I hate that Zendaya's in the fucking movie, god damn it. But you know, I, I, I like Tom Holland. I, I I believe in the machine right now. You know, I think that they realized that this is important. I I'm I do wanna see the movie. I am interested and I, I I have faith. I have faith that it'll at least be decent. I mean, I guess I'm going to be the critical one because I like Spider-Man, but we'll see the most. And you brought up Spider-Man 3. There is a rumor that there's an extended cut of Spider-Man 3 coming out. Ooh. Yeah, because they're re-releasing the original trilogy on Blu-ray, and there's a rumor. Because it comes from uh, Walmart Japan has an ultimate cut of Spider-Man 3 listed. Okay. Hopefully it'll be better with the extended. Hillary, it has to be better. There's no way you can make that movie worse. <laughs> and, and I like Spider-Man. That's like, what I mean. Like, sometimes when they come out with the extended cuts, it actually makes a bad movie kind of good. I I bet you... Unless it's, unless it's Batman vs. Superman. That just made it worse. <laughs> That's a terrible movie. That doesn't count, though, because this is bad. And it should feel bad. Well, if they were to able, if they're able to go back and edit a lot of stuff out of Spider Man three and cut down certain things and add in new things, I bet you they could make a really solid movie. Even if just what's filmed. Like they don't have to go back and try to CGI shit or do whatever. Like if they were to just take alternate takes and this and that and put the shit that was in the trailer and put it together and maybe stretch out the duality of Peter turning evil, you could have a really you know what's going to be fucked up? Is if they do an ultimate cut of Spider-Man 3, and it's actually great, and it's better than Homecoming and The Amazing Spider-Man's 1 and 2, and everyone goes, why didn't this come out? You know, and why didn't we get a Spider-Man 4? And all the only shit. reason I would think that's not the case is because Topher Grace. Remember, you could cut a lot of him out. I know, but that was just absolutely terrible. It's even terrible to call him. Um... Eddie Brock? The wor- one of the worst casting decisions I think that was ever made. Maybe they could just replace his scenes with J. Jonah Jameson screaming Partridge. <laughs> <laughs> or going, Spider-Man! <laughs> you, you see the deleted scene that's in Spider-Man 2.1 where he puts on the costume, right? Yep. Yep. Oh, 
That's so awesome. By the way, listeners, like I've said twice already, but this July will be Spider-Man month, so you'll be able to hear us do some drunk commentaries about Spider-Man 1 through 3, and Dion and I are going to play a little game during that commentary called Where Does Spider-Man Shit the Bed Exactly? <laughs> and so we're going to we're gonna watch with a critical eye, and we're going to determine, we're going to each have our own point, where the film actually shits the bed. For me, it's going to be a little later in the film. I'm sure Dion's is going to be like, I say 20 minutes in. <laughs> Maybe, maybe. For me, it's going to be probably the f- after he kills the Sandman. <laughs> Ooh, I think that's that, my you're guess. giving it a lot of leeway there. You're giving it a lot. No, of no, no. All, but all, look at all the things that everyone complains about take place after that. Like none of the this. That's the only reason I know. I don't say it's garbage like Batman and Robin or BVS because everyone lumps a few scenes out of that movie into like all the other Spider-Man movies, which is unjust and. The first part of the movie is not bad. Like, it follows the storyline of the other two perfectly. Mm. And then just dumb shit happens consistently, consistently, consistently. And you're just like, what the fuck? And then it ends like shit. For me, it's when Silver Gray shows up. And they call him Eddie Brock. The, fir- the, the first scene is okay, because it's during that crane accident, and that's a really epic scene. I just, I hate, I don't, I'm not a Silver Grace fan. Uh, obviously. At all. I'm and Jeff got me into being, uh, <laughs> I love I love Spider Man because of Jeff. Good. Because he lent me that 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 collection. It was like uh, the first book to like number forty or something, and I was just flipping through it in college, and I'm like, this shit's great. And then they shat on it, and I got sad. <laughs> well, I could let you read some really crappy Spider Man, and then oh. you can kind of like even it out like oh maybe this movie's not the worst thing ever to happen that would be Dan Slott he's a garbage writer (laughs) well that was our thoughts on Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 we all seem to love it Phil loved it so much that he fell asleep during this podcast (laughs) good job thank you Phil I don't even think he'll listen this far in so he'll just be like why'd you guys cut me out of the call because you were snoring dude and it was rude fuck you man Tell us how you really feel. No, we'll, we'll need a whole podcast for that. <laughs> It'll just be a picture of his face. <laughs> the Phil Files. Oh. It'll just be like, what we'll do is we'll sit down and we'll each write like a Phil story and then we'll get real close and be like, star date, April 31st, or April 30th, 2016. <laughs> Phil farted in the car and rolled up the windows. I hate Phil. Just something stupid like that. (laughs) How can you love yourself if you really love Phil? $300 is a good price. (laughs) (laughs) Alright, well I've been your host, Jeff Hicks. I've been your friendly neighborhood Samoan. And... And hell no, Joel's plan wasn't better than mine. Fuck that guy. And that's the one who's fucking him. Good. That was the ass slap right there, listeners. You just heard on-air sex. (laughs) Oh, real quick, by the way, somebody streamed themselves fucking their wife on Facebook yesterday. (laughs) What? I I kind of saw that. Yeah, there were those two ugly people? <laughs> yeah, it was, on the, it, was on, it was on that group. I was like, wait, what's going on right now? Is this real? Yep, this is real. Holy shit. I, I like porn. I was really uncomfortable watching these two people screw. Is that, like, real real? I'm fine with, like, real real, but these were just really gross people. Like, like, both of them. Like, real people. Like, were they real people? They're real people, like. Real real people? They look at and you pass, you're like, hmm. Really, really? Really, really. Hey, Hillary, this is the last thing I'll say on the show. Did you hear Girl Meets World's officially canceled? I stopped watching it. Oh, okay. The I nostalgia thought you wore off article. after season one. I wish the nostalgia would wear off for Star Wars, because I hope the Force, or the uh, Last Jedi is the last movie. Just call it The Force Awakens. It literally is just going to be Force Awakens point five. I said to Phil on, in the movie... This movie takes place literally after episode 7. Why will there be a crawl at the beginning of the film? <laughs> Seriously, can you, Luke it, it takes place a minute. You didn't learn shit. 
<laughs> well, I mean, there's, there's, like, there's, there's YouTube videos of like Mark Hamill shitting all over like all those the current Star Wars movies. And I fucking love it. I love it so much. I've seen that, and they deserve it. Oh man. No, Mark Hamill is at the age where he's just too old to give a shit, so he's just gonna be honest. Yeah, and, and, he's, like, and, and, and he's too famous for them to be like, well, we're gonna kill him off. It's like, he, he's like, alright, cool. <laughs> That's fine. I'm the Joker, did, bitch. Did, I still get paid. Did you see the, um... Okay, Nick, you saw that video. Did you see the fucking damage control Kathleen Kennedy did yeah. during the middle of his thing? Yeah. That's the part that made me realize the shit he was saying was not bullshit. Right. Did you see the video yet, Dion? I did. I did. It's hilarious. It's just like, ah, I, I, I really, like, I wanted to, like, message it to Dustin. I was like, oh, yeah, he was a pussy and got rid of Facebook. But I wanted to be like, yeah, this is the movie that you like, dude. People who made it are like, oh, fuck. Because uh, what, what did she say? She's like, she's, um, I can't remember how she, like. No, what like, happens is Mark Hamill goes, we're not the main characters anymore, blah, blah, blah. It's not about us. And then she goes, I just want to reaffirm that they're really important parts of the film. Yeah, yeah, Mark, yeah. Mark Hamill's just like, oh, bitch, no. <laughs> so good. So good. It's, it's, it's sad that we have to live in a world where our favorite thing is so bad, Dion. I know, man. It's like, uh, we're not going to make a good Star Wars movie. We want to cash those checks. Hey, this chick just does stuff now. Hey, hey give me your money. I do love how <laughs> Dustin never has an actual argument. He's like, my kids like it, and it's fun. That's, well, that's that. I just like how he was like, oh, he was like, well, um, uh, is is Yoda saying there is another? Was that Was that not a... A, a crazy revelation or whatever he said. I was like, "Yeah, it didn't stop the plot dead in its tracks, dude." That that's the it that's didn't. the problem that we're talking about here. That's horrible writing. That it didn't. You we go out in the next scene. It doesn't it doesn't stop the movie. The whole here's a lightsaber. He uh, he lost it one time. You're literally like, "What?" What well, she goes, "Well, how'd he get it?" That's a story for another time. You're like, "Wait, what do you mean another time?" Bit what the fuck? Next scene. Next scene. Look, I'm beep boop. I'm the orange robot. Like, the nostalgia factor in that movie was so sickening. Yeah. Oh, God. The funny part is there's, there will never be nostalgia for that movie. Oh, everyone loves what they grew up with. Not really. Because <laughs> by, by everyone online arguments, like, well, if you grew up with the prequels, it's okay to like them, and you probably like them. I was 10 years old when the first one came out, and I thought it sucked the first time I saw it. What's your argument? I was a little kid. I was the target age. You know, the toys, the games, all that shit didn't fall in love with it. it a, a bad movie is a bad movie, and, you know, anyone of any age can figure that shit out. I'm so tired of this excuse that people make for that movie. Yeah, and, and like, the, the excuse is nostalgia. Like, that's not that's not a valid point. Yeah, you feel nostalgic when you watch it, good for you. That doesn't make it good. I know. Look at Fuller House. Exactly. You were excited for that shit. I was, and then it was shit. And I tried, I watched the whole first season, I powered through... I could not make it through the whole first episode of season two. I tried bad, huh? so hard. I'm like, I got, I gotta do something else. Like take a shit. No, because that would be actually enjoyable. Oh, or, 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 or you know, or like it'd be, it'd be better. It would get better. So I just, just sit in the corner or and stare at the wall. <laughs> I put myself in timeout. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad you put your cell phone time out. Damn. Yeah. We're thinking of D2, take my cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> Come back in 10 minutes. It's fine. <laughs> Come back in 10 minutes, boy. <laughs> but you do it for how old you are, so it'd be 27 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Hilly's just in the corner crying. Dion comes and says, What are you crying about? Uh, she just can't tell for 27 minutes. It's just the, the most awkward silence. <laughs> Full what? DJ. DJ. <laughs> it, it, it was the Tanners. And Dion's like, what oh, the fuck? The Fullers now. Wait, seriously? Yes, she married a guy with the last name Fuller. That's why it's called Fuller House, and it's so bad. <laughs> if you could I see my face much. right now and the disappointment. God. Once again, they're playing on nostalgia. I mean, and that's the problem. That's that's the problem. The funny thing is they're trying to play on nostalgia for shit that wasn't that good in the first place. True. I loved, I loved Full House, though. Yeah, but it wasn't Hillary, I loved it, too. It was, great it was the greatest show ever. programming. 
God, it, it, I, I hated that. I hated that thing from the fucking song. Every time it came on TV, I was like, nope, change it. Never like that shit. Whatever happened to predictability? <laughs> you wear the paper for it. It's TV. Uh, everywhere you look. <laughs> I always love when fucking Jeff does that. Because it's like he says it, and then it's just like, like there's there's optimism there, but it's not. It's like it's like poison optimism. <laughs> everywhere you look. Everywhere. Like, Oh, there's a fucking gun pointing the back of his head. I love it. <laughs> sing this, sing this now. I mean, if I have to, I will sing the Full House theme, but I don't want to. <laughs> there we go, the end. We were on the hey Nick on the way to your house. We all sang that. Oh my yeah. god! Oh my god! Thank God! Like, thank God he didn't sing it while I was in the car. I would have punched somebody. I mean, Phil wouldn't have complained about it. He complains about everything. Yeah, but he loves Full House. Yeah. He also loves Roseanne. Oh. Well, well, he, he well that shows you, you know, his, he, his he level He is pain. our John Goodman, so that makes sense. <laughs> Don't give him, no. Don't give him that kind of fucking credit. Don't give him that kind of fucking credit. John Goodman is amazing. Phil is a piece of shit, let's be honest. He's more like the Roseanne bar of the group. <laughs> there, there you go, there you go. <laughs> Remember that time I fucked Tom Arnold? <laughs> you, time? You mean the years she fucked Tom Arnold? Oh, oh Jesus. God! Oh, you can buy a Baby Groot action figure. Oh, it comes. It, it it comes with a rocket. It's forty eight dollars. God damn! Kind of steep. Star Lord seventy. <laughs> oh God! But Star Lord looks awesome. All right, folks. Well, <laughs> we're gonna continue to talk for a few minutes. And but you don't get to hear that part. So thanks for listening, and we will be back on Thursday with another episode of World Class Bullshitters. I have no clue what it's going to be on. So if you have any ideas for the show, uh, leave a comment down in the comments section. We've been getting a lot of comments on our latest videos, so maybe we'll take your idea and make a whole episode around it. Thanks for listening, and we'll be back later. Bye bye. We are Groot. I'm Jeff. <laughs>